Good evening, everyone. It is Saturday, May the 16th, and we are back again for another 8 o'clock Central Time concert. I think this is number 24 in a row, and I'm really excited because as of today, I have all my concerts planned for the end of May. Starting in June, I have... I haven't quite decided, but I think I'm going to start planning on, at the very least, doing these once a week on Sunday evenings. But who knows? I haven't decided yet. But I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, I have to tell you, um, my chat is completely glitched out, so I have, like, no way of, like, seeing who's commenting. I had another window open where I could actually see everything, but then like the sound was coming through my speakers and I was like, I don't want to have a repeat of what happened on my very first broadcast where I had like three windows open and they were all broadcasting at the same time. So please, please blow up the chat. I will enjoy reading those messages when all this is over, but I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, just to let you know, as always, I am broadcasting from Access Contemporary School of Music here in Chicago. This is where I have been teaching for the last six and a half years. I'm also the director of operations here. And I'm excited because after so much, you know, after so many weeks of really not knowing exactly what was in store for us, we have an online live streamed recital for all of our students coming up on the 23rd of this month. And we also have our yearly uh, student produced film festival. It, it was supposed to be on March 28th of this year, but obviously that didn't happen, uh, which is a shame. But it's now happening on uh, June the 13th. And I'm very excited about that. It's, it's nice to finally, you know, having the rubber meet the road and we're actually able to carry on as we normally would. Although normal is a bit, bit of a big word, but we're carrying on and that's a wonderful thing. Uh, just um, tonight is, so on Saturdays I like to do a longer masterwork. And so I don't, I'm going to try and keep my comments as brief as I possibly can because this is a longer work. It's not insanely long, but it is longer. And so just to talk a little bit about what I'm playing tonight. Tonight is Sonata for Flute and Piano by Francis Poulenc. And there is, I know there's a lot of discussion on how that last name is actually pronounced, but I have it on good authority. It's actually Poulenc, as in Sank, the number five. And so Francis Poulenc was a contemporary and acquaintance, at the very least an acquaintance, but par perhaps actually a close friend of the flutist Jean-Pierre Rampal, who I mentioned last night. Jean-Pierre Rampal, all of us flutists really owe a great debt of gratitude toward Mr. Rampal because he's really the one that made the flute, the modern flute, a real solo instrument. It really falls on his shoulders. And he had asked Poulenc a number of times to write, you know, a larger work for the flute. And, and you know, of course, as a composer, you have to chase the bag, as it were. Uh, but finally, uh, Poulenc got a commission from Elizabeth Sprague Coolidge. And so the story goes, he called up Ron Paul and said, you know that piece you've been wanting me to write for you? Well, guess that you're going to get it, and, and the Americans are going to pay for it. So this is it. There are, I mean, the, the, the repertoire, we're really blessed, the flute. We're, as flutists, we're really blessed because we have a really wide repertoire. There are a lot of pieces. Composers love to write for the flute, especially now. Uh, and not every instrument has that blessing. And so there are a number of flute players where, you know, maybe you'll have a piece in your repertoire that they won't. This is not one of those pieces. I guarantee you every single professional flutist in the world has not only learned this piece, they've performed it. So that can go two ways. Well, more than two, really. But because it's such an established piece, you have to make sure that you come correct and learn the piece as it was meant to be played, but also because there are so many people who've performed it, it does give you a little bit of leeway to make your own choices with regard. Now, because it's, as I mentioned last night, French music, there's a lot of nuance and there's a lot of choices you can make as a, as a performer interpretively. And so because, you, know, you, you, you want to steer clear of just playing it the way that everybody else does. I mean, of course, you want to be as I've said a couple times, you know, a good steward of the composer's intentions. But uh, this is one of those pieces where because there are so many people who've performed it, you do have a little bit of freedom with regard to your own interpretation. Having said that, um, by virtue of the fact that I am playing to a 
backing track, I am a little bit painted into a corner as far as some of the choices I would make if I were playing with an accompanist. However, I did go in and, and alter some of the tempos as best as I could without compromising the quality of the audio. But that's as much as I'm going to say about that for now. I want to get into it. This is a three movement piece. Of, uh, this is a three movement piece. And uh, so, yeah, without further ado, this is Francis Poulenc's Sonata for Flute and Piano, first made famous by Jean-Pierre Rampal. I want to make sure I do this in the right order. Because once this thing starts, <laughs> heck.
You know, it's a long piece of music, but it's it's so well written that it doesn't really feel that way. You know what I mean? Or do you? <laughs> I guess I'll find out later because I can't see the chat. But it's one of those things where you spend a lot of time, obviously, working it up. And then when it comes time to perform it, once it's over, you're like, oh, <laughs> it's done. So, all right, now I actually get to talk a little bit about sort of okay so it's been I I, I I was thinking about this I think the last time I performed this was I think January of 2001 it's been a while you know because I describe this piece as like the don't stop believing of the flute repertoire because it's one of those pieces that I mean it's a great piece but it's one of those pieces that it's just such a standard that it's like oh you're doing the pooling um, but I, the very first time I performed this was when I was 17. It was the summer of 1999. And the wonderful Jane Jensen, who I went to church with, was a fabulous pianist. 
she agreed to accompany me. I didn't really do a lot of competing. And so I performed this piece. Yeah, I, um, in early June of 1999, I did a competition and I did the Poulenc there. And <laughs> so normally when you are doing flute and piano, you're usually playing from what we call a reduction. So it was written for orchestra and then someone came along and uh, arranged it for piano. And so those are really tricky to play because they weren't written, you know, they weren't written for the piano. So there are things that are really awkward and they can be really challenging, but the Poulenc was written for the piano. And I gave Jane the music and I said, oh, you know, this won't be so bad because, you know, I was playing the Mozart concerto in D, which I did last week. I was playing that on the concert as well. And that's a reduction. And that piano part is a bummer. It's just a bummer. And I said, well, this won't be as bad because it was written for the piano. And she kind of did one of these. She kind of went, are you sure? <laughs> so, but she did a magical job of it. And uh, yeah, so just so you know, there we go. <laughs> There's 17 year old me. And uh, that was after our performance. Um, no, I didn't win. <laughs> That's okay. But the guy I lost to was this really fabulous clarinet player. And he was almost embarrassed. Like, he was a, he was a buddy. Like, he, and he was a great performer. And he definitely deserved a win. Um, I don't mind coming in second. I don't, whatever. Um, but yeah, so that was the story behind that. And it's just, a, I'm really grateful that I got to play this again. It's, it's just been, it's been an age. So, tomorrow night, I'm going to be playing a couple of my own tunes. Uh, one of them in particular, which I've played a lot. Uh, it's been a while since I've played it, but it's definitely the piece of mine that I've played the most. And there's another piece that comes just before it that, well, I'll talk a little bit about tomorrow, but it's not a piece that I play very much. Uh, I'm excited to play it, but um, it's going to be, I'm, I'm excited to play it for you because it isn't one that I, that I do very much because I, I still quite haven't, I haven't quite sorted it out yet. I'll talk more about that tomorrow. But um, I really thank you for being with me here um, again after, after all this time. And uh, I have all of my next concerts. If you're not a member of the event live at ACM, um, definitely join up. I've got all of my concerts, as I mentioned, planned until the 31st. And I've got some really exciting stuff planned for you, which means I have some practicing that I need to do and some recording. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and so tomorrow is my stuff. And then Monday, I'm continuing on. Um, every Monday, I do a piece by uh, Mr. Herman Beeftink. And so this Monday is the third movement of a piece that I started a few weeks ago called Autumn. And of course, <laughs> outside, in, outside in Chicago right now, it sure as heck feels like Autumn. But thank you so much for being with me here this evening. And I certainly hope to see you again tomorrow. Please stay happy, please stay healthy, and I will see you again tomorrow here on Facebook Live at 8 Central.